Okay, great, Joel. So the lab that you're doing uh, tomorrow is the redox titration quantitative analysis of commercial H2O2. This is your commercial H2O2, so it's your hydrogen peroxide. It says on the bottle that it's 3%. So we're going to verify that using a titration that involves a redox reaction. One of the other chemicals that you're going to be using is KMnO4, that's potassium permanganate, right? When potassium permanganate goes into solution, it dissociates and forms potassium ions and permanganate ions. We don't care about the potassium ions, those are spectators. We do care about the permanganate ions, the MnO4 negative. Those ones will be involved in the redox reaction. And those are, um, yeah, so those are the ones that, are, that will be reacting. Okay? The other thing we're going to do is we're going to acidify this, so we're gonna put um, when we go to add it, we are going to, uh, there's going to be acid in your Erlenmeyer flask, so it will be acidified permanganate solution. Okay. Tell me when. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, the problem with the permanganate solution, as you'll see right here, is that we know it's approximately 0 0.025 concentration, or 0 0.025 molar concentration, but the KMnO4 actually oxidizes small amounts of organic matter, so we don't know the exact concentration of the permanganate. So what we have to do is we have to standardize it on the day. We actually are going, the first step is to determine the concentration of this, and for that we use what's called a primary standard. And that is that really big uh, complex that you see there, iron sulfate, so on and so forth. Okay, That's a very stable compound. And the active ingredient there is the iron 2 plus. So when this compound goes into water, all that we care about is the iron 2 plus ions. Okay, so we're going to use the iron 2 plus ions and this solution uh, to determine what the concentration is of this solution. Okay. As you can see, it says right here on the lab day, we're going to do part B first. So we're actually going to do, we're going to get the data for part B first. Um, and that's because we need dry glassware to get accurate results. So uh, we're going to do, make sure that you do part B first with a dry Erlenmeyer flask. Tell me what. Go ahead. Okay, so this is the way you want to have it set up. Here's your retort stand, here is your burette clamp, and here is your burette. Note that the stopcock is in the off position here. Okay, and we're going to keep that off obviously until we want to use it. All right. You should also have a white piece of paper over here, a white backdrop, so you can see any changes of color in the solution very clearly. What we're going to do now is we're going to rinse our burette. Okay? You may use a funnel, but if you're very careful, you can do it without one. And we're just going to put a little bit into the funnel, or sorry, rather a little bit into the burette. Okay? About five milliliters, nothing more. Okay? And then we are going to tip it and twirl it. Tip it and twirl it so basically we get the potassium permanganate solution uh, along the sides of the burette. Okay, and then we're going to do that uh, about two to three times. And then let's assume that we've done it two to three times. Then we can fill it up. And you should only, be, you should only have about 70 milliliters of solution. That's all that's necessary for this uh, titration. Okay, so we're just going to fill it up here. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to do it carefully so you don't get any potassium permanganate on the outside of the burette. And we're going to bleed some of it through. Right here, this is our waste beaker. Okay, and we make sure we have no air bubbles. Everything is okay. All right, and the purple color as you may have guessed, doesn't come from the potassium, it comes from the permanganate ion. Okay, so now we're going to begin with uh, Part B. Remember, we're using Part B first because we need the dry Erlenmeyer flask. It says, obtain the mass of an empty uh, Erlenmeyer, dry Erlenmeyer flask. So what I'm going to do is, there's my dry Erlenmeyer flask, I'm going to go over here. I obtain the mass which is, in this case, 116.24. Okay. Then I'm going to use a pipette, and as we can see, this pipette is labeled 3 milliliters H2O2. Even though they look the same, please make sure that you use the properly labeled pipette. All right. And 
Uh, for that, we are going to then take three milliliters. So all we do is just depress the button at the top, put it underneath and slowly move our thumb up, slowly. Okay, that is exactly three milliliters. I add this, okay. And then I again, as we can see, the mass has changed. I record the final mass and the difference will be the mass of hydrogen peroxide that was added. Then what I have to do is I'm going to acidify that because if instead of acidifying it here in the burette, I'm going to ask, add the acid here, but when they mix, everything will be acidified. So as you can see here, it's labeled 5 milliliters times 2 H2SO4 because it asks me to add 10 milliliters of H2SO4, so obviously I just do this twice, okay? So again, 1, add, 2, and I add that to the Okay. So now I have an acidified H2O2 solution and it will mix with the permanganate ion for the redox reaction. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it, the um, volume of permanganate solution in here. And I measure from the top and as we can see here, it's just past the 0.5 and just past maybe the 0 0.6, so I make a reading. I would say that is 0 0.68 milliliters, and I'm gonna write that down as my initial volume, 0 0.68. On the day of the lab, you'll have a little card here with a black line that you hold behind, and that will help you see it better. So that's 0 0.68. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the stopcock, and we're going to add volume to this. This blue, this purple color will disappear right away because the permanganate undergoes a redox reaction and obviously changes color as we've seen in some of our homework questions. No indicator is necessary. This is not an acid-based titration. This is a redox titration. And so we'll know uh, about the change in color when it stops going, uh, becoming colorless here and turns back to this deep purple, okay? So if we take a look, we're gonna zoom in here, okay? So I know I started at 0.68 milliliters, and I'm going to add, and I swirl at the same time. As you can see, the purple color disappears right away because the permanganate undergoes the redox reaction right away. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add as much as we can until the purple color just stays. So I'm adding quite a lot right now, and I'm letting it go. Um, and that's because I know that it takes a certain volume before, uh, before this will change, okay? So I'm just going to continue adding here. And I should swirl as well to make sure the mixing happens. Okay, as you can see, the purple color is staying a little more, so I can be careful when I add it because now we're approaching end point um, or equivalence point when the moles of the permanganate is equal to the moles of the peroxide. And what I'm looking for is just the faintest purple color that stays.
Okay, so we'll keep adding and I'll stop the video now. Okay, so as you can see, this is a little bit too dark. So you want, kind of want to go for a lighter color than this, right? And that will indicate that it is, um, that it has completely reacted, right? That you have reached equivalence point. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a reading from here and read off the burette uh, what my final volume is. So I check my reading and I look and I've got uh, 43.70 milliliters. And if I say subtract that volume, then I'll have the volume of permanganate that I added to my solution. Okay, so basically we, we um, follow the instructions here and we do the same thing for part A. And again, we'll get our initial and final volume of the permanganate that we added. And we add all these parts to our data chart and then we will be able to uh, get our from part A we'll get the concentration of permanganate and then from part B using the concentration that we got from part A we can find the um, the moles of permanganate that reacted with the moles of peroxide and then from there we can do the, cal the necessary calculations okay. so make sure you get your data all uh, correct okay and then if you want, there will be a, a help session Wednesday at lunch in room 10. Okay, so a help session Wednesday at lunch in room 10 to prep for the lab quiz.